Hello chess friends, in this video I'm going to show you one of the most spectacular games of the year. It's played in round 6 of the Fide Grand Swiss taking place on the Isle of Man. It's the game Sam Savian against Javokir Sindarov. Two very strong grandmasters and this game will remind you of the young Garry Kasparov as he was the big expert on the King's Indian with the black pieces. But here in this game we get to see a sort of improved King's Indian attack. What it exactly means? Well, watch this game, subscribe to the channel, and you're definitely going to learn something and enjoy the beauty of our game. Let's have a look. 1c4, g6, and white plays here, the move e4. And now if white is gonna play d4 very soon, likely we get the main lines of the King's Indian, but black plays the move e5, making it a little bit harder for white to play the move d4. I mean, of course, that's of course possible, but the pawn will be captured. White plays knight f3, attacking the pawn, bishop g7. Now white plays the move d4, pawn takes, knight captures, knight f6, attacking the pawn on e4, knight c3, castling kingside. So this kind of structure is very well known from a lot of openings, including the king's Indian, and black has a beautiful dark squared bishop, and White has a nice space advantage, thanks to the pawns on c4 and e4, free development with its pieces, but black has not played the move d6, and black is trying to make use of the fact that he has not played that move yet. What that means, let's see, white goes bishop e3, it's a sharp move, uh, in the sense that he's planning to go queen d2 and castling queenside, probably a safer idea is getting the other bishop into the game to castle kingside very soon, but after bishop e3, black now plays the move c6. And here we see the idea, black wants to break free with the move d7, d5. And that's of course a very important idea, trying to open the position, open the center to activate your pieces. And it's clear that if you can play this move in one go, then you have saved the tempo by not having played the move d6 earlier. White goes for the move queen d2, rook e8, attacking the pawn on e4 for the second time, and white protects it with the move f3. But now black breaks free with d5. Excellent idea, white captures, black recaptures. And now, of course, if black gets a chance to get a knight out to c6, maybe later the bishop out, he is more than fine. And in a way, white is even regretting the move f3, as you would rather have the pawn on f2 to support the bishop on e3 a little bit more. But white just continues. Castled queenside, very logical move. Hopefully at some point white is able to exert pressure on this d file against the pawn on d5. Later ideas with bishop h6 are always um, to be considered. And black goes knight c6, getting the knight into the game. And the question is what should white do? Well. You know, with positions with opposite castled kings, they are usually very uh, very sharp. One side is attacking on one wing, the other side is attacking on the other. I think having this pawn on c4 rather than on c2, white's king is quite vulnerable. And for that reason, I believe that the knight is advised here to come back to offer some more aid to the, to the white king. But instead, Savion decides to take on c6 and now b takes c6. Black supports the pawn on d5. And we can see that uh, white doesn't have serious ideas now to take everything on d5. Because at the end, the bishop on e3 will be vulnerable. So white puts the bishop on d4, trying to neutralize the pressure exerted by the bishop on g7. And black plays a very nice move. He goes for the move rook b8. It's a half open file. And it's going to be very important that the rook is, uh, is placed here. And it's a kind of mixture of a sharp King's Indian type of uh, structure. And also a lot of Sicilians think about the Sicilian dragon. You also can have this half open b file with a powerful bishop on, uh, on this diagonal. Both targeting the pawn on b2. Keep that in mind. Pawn on a7 could have been taken here, but it's very risky. The rook will go to b7 and capturing pawns in front of your own king, opening the files towards your own king is usually incredibly dangerous. We will get to see a favorable version of what happens in the game. So instead, white decided here to take on d5. And I think that's 
the key moment of the game because a lot of people will just automatically think about recapturing either with a pawn or perhaps even with the knight on d5 but then pieces will be swapped and it will makes uh, it will make white's life much easier but look the key move here is pawn sacrifice actually it's the, already the second pawn sacrifice of the game because you don't recapture and you sacrifice your own pawn with the idea to attack the bishop and after bishop takes c5 the queen comes into the game with tempo it hits the bishop on um, on c5 which is crucial it's a very important tempo as it's not about material it's about generating new threats against the white king let's have a look the bishop is under threat under threat it went to d6 but I should point out that after a move like bishop d4, there is the plan to put a bishop to f5. It's a beautiful diagonal for this bishop, and there are some nice tactical ideas. For instance, if you um, if you would play the move bishop d3 here to neutralize the pressure exerted by that uh, bishop, black has the key move queen b4 attacking the bishop. Now the idea is that if you take on f5 thinking that black is going to recapture and you're weakening the structure there is this beautiful tactic of bishop h6 it's a skewer you're deflecting the queen the queen cannot take on h6 because of queen takes b2 with checkmate beautiful tactical ideas it's so typical for these kind of sharp uh, positions so you see that the bishop on d4 can easily be attacked by the queen so therefore the move bishop d6 was played in the game White is attacking the rook on b8. And you would expect black to move the rook away. And in fact, a move like rook b7 is actually very good. Like you can after that continue with your standard attacking ideas. Getting the bishop out, getting the other rook over to the c-file. Look at the black pieces. They are all directed at the white king. But Sindarov plays in an even more exciting fashion by going for the move bishop f5 straight away keeping that rook on b8 so white has this option to take the rook on b8 but he didn't play it but let's first have a look what happens after bishop takes b8 Sindarov's idea is to recapture with the rook and he is basically saying look i'm going to crush through your position very soon Sindarov was probably thinking that if white is going to attack this bishop on f5 trying to chase it away then he has this fantastic blow of knight takes d5 opening up the diagonal for this bishop and there are so many beautiful tactical ideas black is about to take on c3 opening up the position in front of the white king if you take on d5 it's bishop takes b2 with check the king can't go anywhere you have to give up the queen and then it's rook c8 check and the king still cannot go anywhere. White will be forced to give up the queen. It's game over. The alternative is to take instead of the knight with the queen on d5. But then, beautiful tactical shot. Queen takes c3. It's a queen sacrifice with the point that after b takes c3, well, if you give a check on b1, the king st can still go to d2. And therefore, you better start with this move. Bishop h6 check look at the fantastic bishops the king can't go anywhere the rook and the two bishops are covering all the remaining squares if you block with your rook it's checkmate on b1 fantastic tactical line after bishop takes b8 rook takes b8 though if white is in really good shape he may have seen that there is bishop c4 still as a defensive idea to protect the pawn on d5 one more time after queen to b4 attacking the bishop, the bishop can come back to b3 and, well, the threats have been parried, at least for the moment. If you go rook c8 with ideas to increase the pressure against the knight on c3, the bishop can come back to c2 and white is still fighting here. It's incredibly complex, but the game goes on. Now, back to the game, because Savion played here the move g4. He doesn't like this bishop controlling all these light squares and you would expect the bishop to go away but then white has the possibility to get the, its own bishop into the game for instance it's a very important moment it's a tempo game when you're fighting for the initiative often you have to consider to ignore the opponent's threat now rather than moving the bishop Sindorov came up with a brilliant idea of 
rook b to c8, pinning the knight on c3. And there are still ideas to take with a knight on d5 so that you open up the diagonal for the bishop together with the queen and the rook. It's very difficult to hold that knight on c3. Why decided to take the bishop on f5 and black takes on d5? It's another sacrifice. We have already seen so many sacrifices, so many beautiful ideas. And white is in huge trouble here. In the game there followed f takes g6. But you want to see, of course, what happens if you take with the queen on d5. Well, there is this move. Rook takes c3. With the idea that if you take with the pawn, the queen takes with check. King can only go to b1 and it will be checkmate on b2. That's it. You cannot take the rook on c3. The other moves, well, if you go with the king away, let's say to d2, the queen on d5 is hanging. If you instead go with the king into the corner, now it's time to take the queen anyway. Rook takes d5 and now the rook has left the back rank. It's time to infiltrate with the other rook and it's going to be checkmate. Beautiful idea. Everything is winning for black. There followed f takes g6. You may even consider just taking on c3 and take it from there, but probably there's no need allowing any pawn capture with check. Black, not in a rush, just recaptured with the h pawn. Now the bishop comes into the game, it hits the rook on c8, and white, well, he has no time to do anything. There's knight takes c3, opening up that king. There will follow a huge discover check. Well, first bishop takes c8, rook takes c8, the knight is about to go away and pick up a lot of material. For instance, if you take the knight on uh, c3, it's rook takes c3 and um, the king doesn't have many great squares to go. If king b1, it's queen b6. Another check on the b file. If you go into the corner, it's rook c1 with double check mate. King a1, not possible. You got a block with your queen, but now it's again a rook to c1, opening up the diagonal for the bishop. So after rook takes c1, queen takes b2, game over. Fantastic line. So after rook takes c8, no time to take that knight on c3. White moved its queen away, but now it's just queen takes a2. Everything is just crushing. The queen joins the attack as well. White played here, bishop c7, trying to close the c file maybe after a rook takes c7 there are ideas to continue the game a bit with something like queen d8 check trying to pick up the rook it's still pretty bad for for black of course but much easier more human finishing touch of this game it's to take on d1 the rook and everything is still hanging you're just about to take on c7 and you will be at least a piece up Probably even more. Queen takes b2 is an idea. Wide resigned here because after king takes d1, you can just give a check on a1. And after king goes away, you pick up the rook in the corner, your rook up with a fantastic attack. This is my favorite game of the tournament. Let me know what you think about it. If there are any other games you would like to see covered, I will do it all for you. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. I appreciate all your support. And I'm looking forward to the rest of the tournament. See you soon. Bye-bye.